as a startup, should we target enterprise deals? Should we go after those big behemoths? Is it going to work for us? And how long will it take to get them signed up? And what do we do to convince them that they should sign up with us, a startup? A lot of questions. And if you're a startup getting rolling, those are a lot of the things you're probably asking yourself. That's why I had Ron Gidron on the show. He's with X-Type. And he was also a startup. And he started targeting enterprise. And he shares some of his experience, some of the things that went well, some of the things that didn't go well, and what they did to start winning big six figure deals. And he shares exactly how they did it so that you can do it too. This is some great stuff. Ron has a lot of awesome experience and I hope that it really helps you. Welcome to Scale Your SaaS, the podcast that gives you proven techniques and formulas for boosting your revenue and achieving your dream exit. Brought to you by a guy who's done just that multiple times. Here is your host, Matt Wallach. And welcome to Scale Your SaaS. Thank you very much for coming. I'm glad to have you here. This podcast is designed to help you grow your company. So if you are looking to generate more leads, if you're looking to close more deals, if you want to scale your company, this is it. Click that button to subscribe. That way you will not miss any of the amazing insights and guests and experts from around the world helping you scale your SaaS. And today we've got one of those such experts, and I am delighted to have him here. Ron Gidron is with us. Ron, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me, Matt. It's great. Yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm glad to have you. Let's make sure everybody knows who you are. So Ron is the founder and CEO at X-Type. And as a software development veteran, Ron has worked in major companies like Symantec and CA Technologies. He himself went from leading teams to leading a business. X-Type is a venture-backed startup reimagining the agile software delivery approach on the ServiceNow platform. The company offers an off-the-shelf option for customers to meet any level of demand on the ServiceNow platform and drive improved business outcomes at scale. He certainly knows his stuff when it comes to growing software, and I'm so happy he's here. Ron, thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, thank, thanks again, Matt. It's a pleasure. Absolutely. So tell me, what have you been up to lately and what's coming up? Yeah, you know, running a business is uh, it's, it keeps you busy. So I've I've been up to we uh, we had just closed our our first uh, fiscal year, uh, um, you know, last quarter and uh, uh, hit some great numbers. And now we're you know we're uh, scaling the machine up a further notch. We just uh, we just raised another round of funding. We're you know we're hiring, we're firing on all cylinders. It's uh it's a great stage in the life of the company. It's, it's, you know, everything's, everything seems great around you, but as you know, this comes with a lot of work and, and, and a lot of different types of focus. Yeah, absolutely. I love that stage. So much energy, so much excitement, so many ideas floating around. You got to fire off on. It's so much fun, but I want to, I want to ask you, how did you come up with the idea for X type? Yeah. So <laughs> that, that's a great question because I think the answer for it is is we didn't come up with it. it 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 appeared so we came up with a different idea right and uh so we uh peter toby and myself with the three co-founders of this we've been in enterprise software for 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 decades um but not in the service now ecosystem and and we kind of knew for a long time that there are there are platform ecosystems that kind of sit outside of the main mainline SaaS, right? You, you, you think about SaaS development, most companies, you think about DevOps, most companies will, you know, will talk, generally talk about AWS Azure and a set mm-hmm. of technologies, you know, around serverless, blah, blah. But then there is another world of development out there that is enterprise platforms. So the Salesforce ecosystems that are, you know, one of them. ServiceNow is, is, is a, is a big, uh, up and comer. I think it's, I think there are more than that by now. Um, and, and there are others. And we looked at those, at those platforms and we thought those platforms are huge. Those platforms, you know, run some of the biggest businesses in the world. And, and there's a lot of development going on on them, but mm-hmm. somehow none of the stuff that we know worked there. So initially we just thought, and, and that's where initially we just thought, you know, this will be some kind of open source thing to play with we'll you know we'll build some integrations and and stuff will work and as we were playing we realized oh my god this is you know this is a completely different area and you know one thing led to another and we just thought this is an interesting opportunity to do something that that is unique and and we got started i love it and and off you went what were some of the best decisions you guys made early on you- you said you've made it through your first year. What were some of those things early on that helped you get kind of uh, some early traction, some early foundation and start to take off? 
Yeah, so I, I can name a couple on 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 a on a bunch of of, of axes here. So one is is on the technical side, right? Mm-hmm. We we came in we came in look at the problem from basically thinking we know it, right? Because we have known DevOps and we understand a lot of a lot of CI and CD and stuff, so we know this thing. And it turns out, yes, we do, and the concepts are the same. But from a solution perspective, none of that applied. So we had to rethink mm. all of that. And it, and it was a very smart thing to do this, to, to basically abandon any preconceived notions that you think you know and just go from, from scratch. We embedded ourselves in the ServiceNow ecosystem. We, we talked to a hell of a lot of people and we started learning, you know, learning from developers in the ecosystem, learning from architects, talking to service now, talking to customers, just understanding a lot more about the platform. And throughout the process, you know, we got we got to learn and then we're able to apply our insights in a way that, you know, eventually started working and is and is now growing, uh, growing nicely. So that's one. It's like, you know, don't the decision to you know, be ignorant on purpose. Like, let's mm-hmm. treat this as as an ignorant thing. Number two, uh, I'd say, is on the business side, which is don't go don't go raising money or doing things before you're ready. We thought, you know, we preferred to know what we are going to do with a very high level of conviction and even have some proof of traction before we even raised our first dollar. So that meant a lot of off hour work, a lot of a lot of garage style, you know. 90s versus 2021 or 2020 uh, work. So, yeah. So we we actually only raised money a little bit after we we'd already you know been very close to to closing our first contract. So we already knew a lot. And guess what? It we still had to 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 iterate and pivot two times. So mm-hmm. yeah, at the very early days, that those are probably the two things that I would say is just focus on the problem, learn something, build something, and only then start the business. Yeah, something I believe very much. Uh, it's it's kind of funny how we we think we need to build a product and then we start to have customers, we start to learn what the actual need is. But uh, going the reverse is so important, really understanding from your market, what exactly are the pains? How can they, uh, you know, what keeps them up at night? What are their goals? And start to really realize that what's the best way to solve it. And so it's kind of funny, a lot of First time founders build the product first, then start talking to customers. And most second time founders do the opposite. They start talking to customers and then go into the the building of the product. But you guys have have figured it out and you've already hit over 10 million in funding. Uh, but I heard you don't want any more. Why is that? Well, um, frankly, right now we don't need any more. So we are, you know, our, our business is solid and we can continue to grow. If we take more, it's gonna be strategically adding where we think, you know, it it matches scale. So hmm. from a managing the business perspective right now, what where we're at is that we believe that you should, you know, grow as quickly as you can, right? Obviously, as fast mm-hmm. as possible, but not faster. <laughs> so so, you know, if if like raising 50 or 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 doing something like that too early might actually hinder your chances of success. So, mm. so we're very particular about growing, right? We're, at, we're, we're in the startup business. We wanna grow this thing. We wanna be as fast as we can, but we're also, I mean, this, is, this may be a stupid analogy, but if you ever, you know, anyone that's played like a racing, like a racing game on, on a computer, you know it, right? When you're young and you start, you just hit the throttle and then you crash and you burn it, and then you learn how to drive that thing. And it means you got to break sometimes, right? So, so that's sort of why it's it's not. We don't have anything against raising capital. It's just about when's the right time, and you know when do you hit the throttle? When do you, you know, when do you break? I love it. Really well said. And I know you guys have done a good job of kind of targeting enterprise deals. And, you know, that's something that a lot of people wonder. They ask, should we treat enterprise deals differently than other others? What's your take on that? Yeah. So um, X-Type is, X-Type, I, I would say X-Type went the opposite way of most DevOps, most DevOps, like the playbook in the DevOps space is whether you do an open source or you don't, but but it's it's basically all PLG, right? I'm I'm gonna build. Uh, I'm gonna go bottom up. The go to market's mm-hmm. bottom up. You you sell to developers. You know, forget the business model. Whether you sell seats or you sell consumption or or whatever. But you but you you get some volume. You get grassroots movement, and then and then you grow. 
the amazing stories of, of you know the last decades atlassian with what, what what it did which is you know an amazing company right mm -hmm. but at the end of the day a big enterprise company always lives off of the enterprise deals the enterprise business those those bigger you know more meaningful deals and with x type we actually uh um baffled with this and and thought about it very hard in the early days and we decided that because of the nature of the ecosystem that we're that we're targeting because service now is such a um it's such a a pivotal piece of technology for these organizations because mm -hmm. it's at the core it's at the heart of everything they do then we quickly realized the platform owners the people who own the business and the architects right they 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 um they're at the at the cross center of the enterprise and they are the people that we need to sell to so here's another thing right and it would it would be easier to just target the service now developers etc and we absolutely you know provide value to them but we realized that in order for us to make money we had to build value that 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 talks to these two personas the platform owners mm -hmm. the, the chief architects so we decided we're going to go straight for straight to the enterprise deals. And, and as a matter of fact, X-Type had started with no PLG. It, we're still a SaaS, it's a 100% SaaS, but our, but our go-to-market model was enterprise sales, fully loaded from day one, um, which you know isn't the most popular. The very interesting thing is that we have done, we still do large enterprise deals. That's our, our bread and butter, and we're doing, we're doing a good number of them, but we're actually adding PLG right now. So, so we're doing, mm. so we're doing the opposite. We're, we're moving down market. Interesting. Uh, just the, the long tail, if you will. I know I'm dating myself here a little bit, but. <laughs> we'll be right back. Scale Your SaaS is supported by ToroWave. Lots of software leaders I talk to are looking to scale their SaaS. And I keep hearing over and over about one major struggle, getting ghosted by buyers after the demo. How frustrating is it? When you have a great demo, you're feeling good, they like it, it seems like a done deal, and then crickets, nothing. You reach out, they're not responding to you at all. And when these software companies, they ask me to dive in, I notice that these sellers are following up the wrong way, or actually I should say with the wrong medium. What they're doing is they're hammering emails over and and over again. I got a news flash for you. Email effectiveness is dwindling down and down every year. So why beat your head against the wall losing all kinds of business? Start texting, mix in texts along with emails and calls and watch your conversion rates go up. In fact, conversion rates go up by about 50% when you use texting as part of the follow-up. People are used to it. And did you know the response rate on texts is 98%, 98%. So why throw emails into a a black hole knowing that they're never going to get returned. Text buyers and get results. But don't use your own phone. All kinds of security and compliance issues if you do. Also, none of that data is with your company. That's not good. Instead, use this system, ToroWave. ToroWave is designed for sales. It makes texting with buyers super simple and fast, and it helps drive more deals. Deals that you've been losing until now. For being a listener, you get 50% off your first month of using ToroWave. 50% off. Just go to ToroWave.com slash scale. That's T-O-R-O-W-A-V-E dot com slash scale. Get signed up and start winning more deals like Tracy, who closed $170,000 in three days after starting. Again, go to ToroWave.com slash scale. Catch up and win by texting with Toraway. And we're back. Well, I think that's really interesting. You're right. It usually goes the other way. And it's something that's that's curious. I want to know how did you get some of those those early deals? You know, challenges that startups face, uh, you know, targeting enterprise are, are many. What did you guys do to to win some 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 early deals there? So we had no sales teams. No, you know, no budget, no, not a lot of marketing. I mean, we're we're talking about just you know three three people, and so we brute forced it. So the the thing the thing we did have is a is a great focus on the problem. We hmm. you know we were we were at a place where we knew the problem very very well, and we knew that we have a good chance of solving the problem, and we had an early MVP product that solved some of the most critical points 
And so, you know, we were just not shy about cold calling, cold in-mailing, LinkedIn, and, you know, just just didn't stop. And, and we sold our first three deals, enterprise deals. I mean, um, one of them was Zurich Insurance. That's a very public reference for us. So there's two other banks after right. that. So we're talking big, big companies. Yeah. Just just the old fashioned way, like call them up, set a meeting, talk to them. They go dark. You go back and you hunt them and you email them. And you're right. And and I and I think the reason it worked was because of our focus on the problem, because the problem mm -hmm. we talked to was real. So they and it was, in fact, real enough that they would talk to, a, you know, three guys in a truck. Yeah, I mean, that, that's so awesome. I love to hear that because you're absolutely right, Ron. If that problem is big enough, they won't care how big you are, how long you've been around, how nice your office is. If you can solve a problem that is terrible, you can win deals regardless of who you're actually talking to. And I think that's such a great lesson for everybody out there. And it's something we talk about. I talk about it a lot with my clients. You know, Believe it or not, it's not always the pr best product that wins. It's how Absolutely. you can make sure the buyer understands their problem and that the buyer realizes that they need to fix that problem as soon as possible. And so when we talk with our clients, we talk about in discovery, you got to get them emotional, get them hating their problem. And if you can do that, right. they'll, they'll, they'll want to work with you for sure. It sounds like you've done that well. It's it's a hundred percent. I I I also want to say that that is probably the reason why X Type exists, and we didn't give up. And because uh, because I mean it's hard, right? And I'm not gonna. You know, it, this it takes a lot of blood, sweat, and tears to 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 get something. And and the reason we never never gave up was because of our conviction of the problem. And because mm. very early on, even when even when you know we talked about the problem, we got people listening, and then they walked away because we weren't ready or we were too small or. Etc. So you, you get a lot of these things that are very disheartening, very kind of hard, right? It wasn't our love with with the the solution itself, which mm. today is. I mean, I'm I'm totally in love with the product. It's beautiful. It it works. It's out of the box, but it's not that that got us here. What got us here is the problem, and it mm. was in my mind, the back of my mind. This is maybe for, for people starting out. In the back of my mind, I couldn't let it go. I was like, this problem is real. If I don't solve it, someone else will. I'm not going to let anybody else solve it. I, I found the problem. It's like finding gold. Here's a problem. Mm, that's so cool when that happens. You also talked about how you got to stay on it and you can't get down. It's a roller coaster. And sometimes these big deals take a long time. You know, it's just it's just one of those things. So can you talk to us about the importance of understanding the type that the, the time it takes to work with enterprise and how to work with that? Yeah, so a typical enterprise sales cycle, you know, for for a six figure deal is is is, you know, I would say the shortest is three months. They don't, they hardly exist. They and you know they can take up to twelve months. And so mm -hmm. now that poses a, a, a so I I I I'd spend twelve months on a million dollar deal every day, right? But then how many of those do you have, and how much cash do you have? Now you're a startup, right? You're bootstrapping here. Mm -hmm. You're you're paying salary. So so it's not as easy as it sounds because hey, nobody promises you that deal, and you've got to put all the upfront work to do it. So it it might sound better than than what it actually is in the beginning. And you think, yeah, but how, you know, I, I can't find a real way to make this happen. Mm -hmm. So so enterprise deals will take, you know, three to nine months. But then and and most enterprise folks like me will tell you, you know, a 30K deal or even a 6K deal might take you as long as a 100K deal. If you're working with an enterprise, right? So, True. so that's number one, right? If you're gonna if you're gonna sell to enterprises, make sure you you sell big enough deals that are worth your time. Yeah. And number point. two is relentless relentless focus on trying to shrink the time, and the way you do that is by again learning and applying your learns. So, selling to enterprises is very different to, than selling to to individuals. So when you sell, for example, to a developer persona and you're selling a, you know, a, a PLG type product, right? They get it on their credit card or something. You're basically selling to one person. I think that the thing to understand about enterprise sales is that you're not selling to any one person. You are selling to a team. And mm -hmm. that is the thing you got to nail. And you, and so this is like hurting, 
you know, I don't want to say cats because they're act- some of them are actually pretty good and pretty organized, but you need to convince the economic buyer. You need to convince the technical buyer. You got to get, you know, maybe they want to try the product out before you do it. Um, and there's, and there's, you know, there's procurement processes, stuff like that. So you, you got to know what you're dealing with and you got to have a plan for selling to the team, making sure that you don't waste time, right? Don't wait to speak to the procurement people after you do this. Do it now, right? Also, so that's one, just understand that you're that this is a parallel job and that it, you're not selling to a person, you're selling to a team and you got to map it out. Number two is, and we do this a lot, we were talking about it today. So if you've got the problem nailed and you've got a solution, so and now now you think you're in a great spot because your customers love, they they are, they have a problem, they love your product. So you've got the you know why they would buy and why they would buy you, but the question you need to answer is why would they buy you now, like now versus later, and that is it. That is a big 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 thing to focus on, and so you got to find a compelling event. So if you're you know so if you're selling monitoring software, right? You better talk about when was the last time something broke, <laughs> and right when is it going to break again? You got, you know like you got to raise the urgency. When it comes to us, we talk about stuff that's in service now. When was your last clone? How often? Do you you know so specific stuff, but and and having said all that, it's never good enough. So this is a thing that you keep at all the time, all the time. Yeah, it's brilliant advice. I, and, and I echo that. It's something that I work with my clients a lot on, especially with enterprise. How do we shrink that sales cycle? So I mean, a lot of people are like, hey, I want my sales cycle to be a month long. Well, how long is it? It's a year. I'm like, well, that's going to be tough <laughs> to go from a year to a month. We can, could take it from a year to six months or six months to three months or three months to one month. But you understand that there are definite ways to lower that sales cycle and to get deals done quicker. And I love that you've shared some of those awesome points. And unfortunately, we're, we're kind of running short on time. But Ron, I want to understand, what advice would you have to other tech leaders who are starting out? They're just getting their companies going. They maybe want to target some bigger businesses, some enterprise. What advice would you share with them? Yeah, it's, we kind of covered. Like Number one, make sure make sure you understand the problem before you understand the solution. Hmm. And re- like you got to fall in love with the problem versus a solution. That's my number one kind of thing. And then, and then, if you're going to fall in love with a problem, do the work to make sure that solving the problem is going to be worth your while. <laughs> Meaning that the, not only or oh, here's a problem, yes, but who cares, right? And how much mm-hmm. money is involved? Like you got to do that analysis and make and and kind of have a, at least a, an understanding of that. Um, and then the rest is just what we said. It's 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 about tenacity. It's it's about you know, and and all of that will be when if you're if if you do attach to a problem, then then that stuff is not going to be as hard. It's going to come naturally to you because you're not going to be able to let it go because you know this is a real thing. So I don't know. Almost push yourself in a corner. Right? Put yourself in a corner that you just there, there's no other way, and then it'll happen. I love it. I love it. I love that word tenacity. I think that's really critical for a founder to feel that. And I hope that everybody out there takes that to heart. But Ron, this has been great. Thanks for coming on and, and sharing all this. It's really important. I think that a lot of people are going to learn and level up from this. How can our audience learn more about you and X-Type? Well, you can hit me up on LinkedIn. I'm, you know, Ron Gidron or uh, X-Type. You go to www.xtype.io. Um, you know, come see us. Perfect. We'll put all that into the show notes. But Ron, thanks so much for coming on the show. This has been awesome. Thank you so much for having me, Matt. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. I appreciate you being here. And I appreciate all of you out there. Thank you very much for being here. Thanks for watching and listening. Once again, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. That way you will not miss any other amazing experts like Ron giving you all their best tips. So thank you very much for being here and we'll see you next time. Take care. Thanks for listening to Scale Your SaaS. For more help on finding great leads and closing more deals, go to mattwallach.com.